Hello, colleagues. As you may know, um, some people and even some professional societies are observing shutdown STEM today. And this is in recognition of the recent killing of George Floyd and the protests that are going on around our country um, because of that killing. When I spoke with Barbara Gordon yesterday, we decided that to shut down, to be absent, to be quiet today was to miss an opportunity to start what we think is a very important conversation for our society and its members. I offered to make some comments at the beginning of the session to try and provide some context, my context, on the situation. To be honest with you, I've struggled to assemble those comments um, because I'm still very angry and convinced that the awakening we're seeing in the form of the multiracial protests across our country is going to go right back to sleep after the cameras stop rolling. And so I'm trying to be constructive and positive and maybe a little bit optimistic, but please recognize that I'm still coming largely from a place of anger. What I'd like to do over the next few minutes though is to share my interpretation of current events and some suggestions I have for moving forward to what I hope will be a more equitable future. I've been a member of ASBMB for more years than I can remember, and, and probably since some of you, before some of you were born. And long before I became a member of ASBMB, I was born into an African-American body in the United States. I've been aware of my race since before I started grade school, and I'm reminded about it each and every day and have been for nearly 60 years. I could spend the next few minutes telling you about the slights, the microaggressions, and the outright racism that I've experienced in my life. The petitions that were circulated to try and get my family out of a middle-class neighborhood in Pennsylvania. The seventh grade teacher who decided I didn't have a future in science and was ready to track me into courses that if I was lucky would have gotten me into community college. The students who to this day refer to me as Ms. Barbour because they can't imagine that a middle-aged black woman would have a PhD much less a leadership position at a primarily white institution. I'm sure that each and every one of my African-American friends and peers, and indeed your colleagues at your institutions could tell you similar stories. But instead of focusing on me, I wanna focus on the recent event that concerns me most. Make no mistake, I am absolutely devastated by what happened to George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Aubrey and so many before them. But the event that concerns me the most is what happened in Central Park, when a white woman knowingly exercised her privilege and put a black man in a position that could have resulted in his death. And then she claims she's not a racist. It's this kind of insidious privilege that underlies many of the George Floyds and Breonna Taylors and the other things that have happened in this country. Every one of us has privilege, me included, and every single one of us uses it to gain advantage. That's why it's called privilege. But some of us gain bigger advantages than others. And for some of us, that advantage can set up a life or death situation. While we all need to be responsible stewards of our privilege, and I think we should manage it in the same way we do conflict of interest, by acknowledging it and taking steps to mitigate it. White people in this country need to be particularly mindful. So I urge you as colleagues, peers, and aspiring biochemists to work hard to move past this privilege. How? To be honest, I'm not completely certain. You might argue that it's my responsibility and the responsibility of other African Americans in this country to educate you. But to be honest, some of us are getting pretty tired of educating. You might read some recent literature. White Fragility is a, a book that comes to mind. It's very powerful. And I've heard about, but I've not yet read another book called Me and White Supremacy that has, um, has, in, has information about the various guises that privilege comes in and some of the steps you can take to mitigate it. You might talk to your African-American friends and colleagues about their lived experience and how they perceive your interactions with them. If you do go that route though, please remember that this situation is about them, about us, and, and not about you. And if your African-American colleagues and friends are, too, are, are still too hurt or too angry to have a conversation in the way that you wanna have it right now, you need to give them that space. I hope my comments are helpful. I, I hope they're not too negative. And I want you to remember that this is coming through my lens, which is still a, a very, very angry lens. 
as time goes on, I hope to channel my anger into something positive and that ultimately I can affect positive change. Hopefully my comments will inspire you to work with me and others so we can do the same. I thank you for your time today and um, I thank the ASBNB for giving me this platform.